Hello, it's Erica from Sewing Machines Etc., where your sewing success matters most. Um, today I thought I would give you a little, quick little demo on how to transfer designs onto your fabric for, um, for quilting. One of the products that I'm going to be showing you today is the Quilt Pounce here. And this is a real favorite with us because it leaves a mark on the fabric that doesn't rub off, or at least doesn't rub off easily. It can only be removed with water or the heat of your iron. So um, we just love it. So there's two ways which you can use your stencil. and um, Stencils can be found in a number of different places. I'm going to show two examples today from a couple of books that we have, 150 blocks for baby quilts. These are applique templates in here, but I've increased the size of this toadstool, and I'm going to be using this to transfer the design. A couple of other books that we have, I'm going to show another one from our quilting dot to dot, and this has got lots of continuous designs in it. Um, quilt this by Linda Smith, freehand patterns. Uh, creative classic these are continuous line designs so these are just a really good resource for your line art you can also use coloring pages anything that's a fairly simple design so the first way I'm going to show you to transfer your designs is using a photocopy I've increased the size of that toadstool and this works well with simpler designs I've got a tracing wheel here with the serrated edge. This is the one by Clover. It's ergonomically designed. You can see that the wheel extends beyond the or below the tool itself. So all I'm going to do is take my um, not my fabric, my paper, and I'm going to run the tool along the toadstool itself. Now you will get the best perforations if you've actually got a soft pinnable cutting mat underneath. I definitely would recommend protecting your surface because this perforated tracing wheel has got little pins in it and you don't want to be, if you're working on your oak table or something, damaging the surface of the hardware. So I'll just finish tracing around all the way here. I've gone off a little bit there, but that's okay. And back to the corner. So now I've got my paper and you can actually feel that the pokies stick out more on the back of the paper where it's pushed through. That textured side is the side that you want to have up. So if that is a concern for you in transferring your designs, remember to photocopy your designs in reverse or trace them through the back side if that's possible. So all we need to do is lay that over top of our fabric where you want it, taking the quilt pounce and it has a little sponge pad that's got the powder absorbed into it. I'm just going to rub this over top of my paper and I'm rubbing not pouncing. Bouncing it up and down will release too much powder. And when I remove this, there you see your design. And I've actually probably put more on than is needed. You'll, I'll do a little less on the next sample. Another tip with the quilt pounce is do store it upside down, otherwise you'll find that this extremely fine powder that fills it you'll get end up with too much in the pad. And that may also be why I've released too much here because we have a habit of storing it upside down. It's uh, more economical. It'll last longer if you store it upside down. So, okay, I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and so show you a second technique for transferring holes onto your paper. Okay, so here I am at the Husqvarna Viking Emerald 203. Um, if your machine has it, I would recommend reducing the speed on your machine as far as it can go. Also choose the needle down setting so that if you come to a point that needs to be pivoted, your needle will land down and you can just lift your presser foot and, and uh, turn your paper. The machine is not threaded. No thread in the bobbin, no thread in the uh, top in the needle either. I've already started this and this technique works well for designs that are more complicated. You can see that this would be a little bit uh, more difficult to trace around with the wheel. Um, so you're going to hear an odd squeaking sound. That's the sound of the needle going through the paper and that is normal. I've reached a pivot point here and I'm going to turn all the way around and continue stitching around the outside of my heart. There we go. Needle out of the fabric. Now because I've used this needle to stitch on paper, I would not recommend using it for stitching on fabric now. Just like scissors and rotary cutters, if you use a tool from paper, it's not going to be great for fabric anymore. So now that I've got those holes perforated, once again I'm going to turn the, the uh, paper pattern over and go to my pounce tool. 
Give that a quick little rub. And let's see what we get on the other side. There you go. So much less chalk on there, much clearer outline. So now that you've got it on your fabric, you can of course, um, you can cut it out and use it as an applique. You can stitch over top of it for an outline design. Um, you can use this to quilt through three layers of fabric, any number of things. And those marks, you can see I'm brushing against it. If you travel with your quilts, you may, they may come off a little bit, but not 100%. So how do you get rid of those marks when you're done? Well, I'll take it over to the iron. I'll show you how easy that is to do. Okay, so it's super easy to get rid of the marks from your chalk pounce. All we have to do is come over to the iron. You can also do this with your blow dryer if you are, I don't know, in a hotel room and you don't have access to an iron. Um, the heat will start to remove it. You can also give it a little shot of steam and that will help as well. So see how those marks are removing from the fabric. Easy peasy and you're ready to go. So that is a quick overview on how to transfer designs from a book to paper, to your fabric. Once you've put it on the paper, you will have a permanent solution uh, that you can use more frequently. Have fun.